So now, with this package in hand, we can start with the first conservation balance principle, which is the mass conservation. So, as I told you, we postulate that in our continuum medium, in our continuum medium that is moving along time, that can change of volume and shape along time. We postulate that in spite of all this, in spite of all this, the mass of our continuum medium is always the same. So the mass doesn't change. It can deform, it can increase volume, it can decrease volume, but the mass is the postulate. Maybe now it's, it's quite obvious for you, but maybe for some guy coming from another universe where this principle doesn't hold, that would be something which is a strong postulate. Not for us, but we postulate that in a formal way. So we say that if we compute the mass of our control volume at time t, and as a subsequent time t plus delta t, the mass in both cases is the same. And of course, it's a positive value. Okay? And we say that we postulate that in a quite exhaustive form. I'll tell you with that. We say that this happens not on, only for the full control volume, not only for the full control volume that we are interested in, but for every subdomain, for every part of this control volume. So for every part, larger or smaller of this very subset of this control volume, the mass at time t is constant and equal to the mass at time t plus delta t. Okay? That's our postulate. Now let's see how does it translate into equations. That's a conceptual postulate, and let's see how with our baggage now we are able to translate that into equations. Okay. So if the mass is constant a long time, that means that the derivative of the mass of the continuum medium of the vo material volume, the derivative of this mass uh, understood as the contents of mass at t plus delta t minus t divided by delta t when delta t tends zero is equal to zero. Okay? But the point now is I want, wanted to express that this mass is constant. Then I have to express the mass. How do I express the mass in the control volume? Well, in a dV, in the differential of volume, the mass is the density times dV. If you want to obtain the mass in all the material volume, I have to sum. That is, I have to integrate the term rho differential, differential V on all the a volume of the, of the um, control of the, um, of the, of that you are interested in and for every subset of this material volume. Okay? And also at time t and also at time t plus delta t. So we have to differentiate this function of t, but look that the, the, the domain at which we integrate changes a long time because it's a moving, uh, a, a, a moving uh, volume. So now to express that as a material derivative of an integral, what type of material derivative should I use? The local derivative or the material derivative? What do you think? The material derivative. Because I want to express that the contents of the mass in that domain that changes a long time. But it's occupied by the same particle, it's a material domain. The, the change of mass in this, in this pack of particles is going to be zero. So then I have to place in fight inside of the equation that express the mass, the integral over the domain of rho differential b, I have to place the equation of material derivative with all the implications of that. What are the implications that to take, to, to perform this integral, I have to do an integral of this expression, mu being the kernel. So now mu is equal to rho, so that would be the integral of differential of rho different, di, di, with respect to t, the material derivative of rho, plus rho divergence of b. So that is equivalent to postulate that the mass is constant. The mass of this material volume is constant. And this is equivalent, and it's important to say that this has to hold not for the, that volume control, the, that material volume, sorry, but for all subsets, for every part of this material volume. We expect that not the whole mass is constant, but in every part, the, mar, the mass is constant. So I add 
this condition for any subset of B and, of course, for all time. Okay? So this expresses that the mass doesn't change at any subset at any part of the um, continuum medium at any time. That's our postulate now expressed in mathematical expressions. Okay, and now I'm going to introduce something that we are going to use a, no a number of times, which is very typical of continuum mechanics. Whenever I have set, that means that they could, this expression should hold for any part delta b in the interior, in, in the, in the Inter inter integral in the in the integration domain. So what about if I put that a differential volume? So so to speak, the volume associated to a single particle. This equation should hold because with that I said that also when incremental of vt is differential of vt. So just the volume associated to a single infinitesimal particle. This equation should hold too. But of course, if in this integral, I just place one term of the sum, so only I integrate for differential of bt, then this becomes, well, just we can drop that and we say that this equation, which is differential of rho respect to t plus rho differential of b at the point where we are considering the differential volume is equal to zero. So in other words, I can consider that delta v is getting to differential of b and in that in, uh, is tending to differential of b, and th under this situation, that integral becomes the kernel evaluated at that point times differential of b equal to zero. So if we imagine that if we drop that, and we have that differential of rho with respect to t plus rho delta v, differential of b equal to zero at the point for the particle that I'm considering, what should happen? That then, then should be zero at this point. Okay? And since the kernel should be zero at this point, and this point can be any, then we conclude that the localization process that comes out from this fact here, if this condition here was not included, I couldn't apply the localization, the localization process. But this, this, in this case, whenever I have an integral expression, which is fulfilled for every part of the domain integration, then necessarily the kernel of the integral, in that case this, has to be zero at any point of the domain. In other words, then we have just removed the integral character of this equation, and we have just translated through, through this localization process to the fact that the material derivative of the density plus rho, the density, divergence of B, which, by the way, can be expressed also by operations in this equation here, the local derivative of the density plus the divergence of rho B, has to be zero at any point, at any point occupied by the continuum medium at any time t. So that's what we call the local form of the mass conservation. This, in other words, this would be the global, or this one maybe, sorry. That, that expression here would be the global form because it's given in terms of an integra integral. But now, applying this subtle but certainly true localization process, we conclude that in order to be, this happens for any subset, then the kernel of the integral, the kernel, what is in the, in the integral uh, kernel, has to be zero at all points of the integration domain. That's what we call localization process. And we are going to apply the same type of problem of localization process whenever we have an integral condition which has to be fulfilled not on the domain of integration, but if for any subset of the domain of integration, which is this case. In other words, what happens at the integral level happens to at the kernel level. So what we said that happens at the domain, for the domain of integration and any part of the integration domain, then can be translated into a partial differential equation. That's a partial differential equation. Look, that's the first time that we obtain a partial differential equation. <laughs> 
to the first one that we are just in, including our pocket to try to describe the continuum medium. That is the famous, famous continuity equation. And what is the continuity equation then? Well, it's just the expression as a differential equation, as a local equation, at every point of the material of the continuum point, of the continuum domain, is an expression of what? Well, the conservation of mass. So that equation says in mathematics, in terms of partial differential equation, that whatever they are the density of the body, whatever it is the velocity of the body, then they should fulfill that equation in order to preserve mass conservation. That's the, beast, the, the, the big result that we are uh, obtaining that. The first conservation law, which is the mass is constant, now is just translated into the continuity equation. Okay. Look, that continuity equation is essentially given in local, in a spatial form. Look at here, I've emphasized that the arguments of the density and the velocity are the spatial coordinates and time. And what about expressing the same equation, but now imagine that we're using a material description. So we are using the material label, the particle label, so the material coordinates, as a way of describe the, 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 the motion. So that now we should find another the equivalence of this equation or the equivalence of this principle just by describing that in terms of the material coordinates, the capital X. And that's not difficult now because we have a number of equations that we derived previously, previously that now we can obtain. Look, it's that equation here. You can look at that uh, in, in the book. But essentially, we obtain, you, you remember that we obtain the derivative of the, the determinant of the gravity deformation tensor in that expression. So from that, we can obtain the divergence of the velocity in terms of that. So we can replace this divergence of velocity in this equation, replacing that equation into here. Then we also have an, this equation, differential of B, is the differential of f tan times the, uh, the gradient of, the, uh, of f, the determinant of f, sorry, times the differential volume at the reference configuration. So we also replace that here. We have here the material derivative of the density, which means, I emphasize here, the derivative with respect to time of the log of the material description of the density, so it's the partial derivative of the material description of the density. So we replace everything into here. And look, now, instead of dB, the differential of volume at the current time, I have dB0, the differential of volume at the reference configuration. So the volume attached at the particle at the reference configuration. So, you know, the integration domain becomes the reference configuration. So that was something that this integral now look that is expressed at the reference configuration. And everything here is now expressed in terms of the material coordinates. Okay? By operating a little bit, we see that this derivative, which is made, this kernel, which is made of two terms, can be expressed as the derivative of the product of the density times the determinant of f. So finally, we see that the material global description of the conservation of mass can be done establishing that the integral on the, at the reference configuration, at the volume occupied by this moving continuum medium, but at the reference configuration of what? Of the density of every particle along time, times what? The determinant of the gradient of the formation tens tensor, but now expressed in material description has to be zero for any subset of the reference uh, vo the volume occupied by the reference configuration and for all time. And now this, and again, a situation in which we can localize. So by localizing that, then we obtain that this term should be zero. So we said that the, the derivative with respect to time of the material description of rho times f is equal to zero. What does it mean? If I have a function of a space and time, 
and the derivative with respect to time is constant, what can I say about this function? What can I say? It's constant. Sorry, the derivative with respect to time is zero. What can I say with respect to this integral? That is constant a long time. And that's what we have here. Then this rho times f is constant a long time. Or in other words, the value that this function ta takes at time t is equal to the value that this function takes at the generic times uh, t. So the value at the reference configuration t equals 0 is the same that the value that it takes at any time t. But look, at the time t equals 0, f, the grain of the formation tensor, is the unity tensor. Its determinant is 0. So that is 0. So that means that rho 0, rho at time 0, is equal to rho t times determinant of f. Or, in other words, rho t, the density of any particle at time t, is equal to the density of the same particle at the reference configuration divided by the determinant of the gradient of the formation tensor. So that is the material counterpart of this spatial counterpart of the conservation of mass. Both expressions, the continuity equation and that equation, reflect or describe a very crucial property that we assume for our continuum medium is that the mass doesn't change in any part of it. Okay? Look, that one has advantages. It's not a differential equation. Okay, it's an, uh, there are no differentials here. It's an algebraic equation. Okay. But anyway, that is the local material form of the conservation of mass. Look, that now we retrieve something that I anticipated long ago at the first class, where I said, look, that the determinant, the, 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 the determinant of the of f, of the gradient deformation tensor, has to be always positive. Why? Because if it was not positive, either that or that would be negative. So densities would be negative. And that is not physical. That's an assumption that we assume that the mass is always positive, which I, I said also specified in here. The mass is always positive, and the mass is always constant. OK? So now we retrieve why the reason, because a, a certain motion described in equations uh, should, uh, in order to, to represent a physical meaningful um, motion of a continuum medium, the gradient, the Jacobian of the motion, or in other words, the gradient of the formation tensor has to have a positive, different from zero determinant. 